When I was a kid, I hated going to church. Hated it. I was no good at sitting still and paying attention. I'm still not. But my parents dragged me every week, and I didn't put up a great big fight because I knew it wouldn't do any good, and also I wanted my parents to think I was perfect. In retrospect, there wasn't much chance of that happening. But I went and discovered that my favorite part of the Mass was when the priest said, the Mass is ended, go in peace. <laughs> and we would all respond, thanks be to God. <laughs> and I liked that part. As a child, I did not understand the concept of being sent forth. I did not understand the scriptural reference about being sent forth, about Jesus sending forth his disciples into the world to continue his work. At 10 years old, I did not understand that Eucharist is not something we just come here to receive, but rather it's something we become and that we are sent forth to live it out and become and act out the Eucharist in the world. We are called forth to become the hands and the feet, the heart and the face, the very body and blood of Christ, the very real presence of Christ in the world. And that's a critical point of why we come here. Not to just receive Eucharist and leave it here, but rather to carry it with us and become it and share it in the world. In a few weeks, as we transition to the new language of the evolved Roman Missal, we're going to notice a slight change in the language we use for that sending forth. Instead of saying, the Mass is ended, go in peace, we will say things such as, go forth, the Mass is ended, or go in peace to glorify the Lord with your life. The new Missal gives us four options to use, and all four of them place the emphasis on going forth into the world rather than the Mass being ended. So while we're going to struggle with some of the changes and some of the new language and we're going to be uncomfortable as we try to understand what some of it means, I think this, this part's an, an improvement. It shifts our focus from the Mass being ended to what's really important, the calling forth, to go forth and live out the Word and the Eucharist in the world. This is a big challenge for us. It's a challenge because we like to compartmentalize our lives. It's a little more convenient that way. If we can live on our own schedules, like I I've got my morning prayer, I've got my evening prayer, I've got my weekend mass, maybe a couple of hours of volunteer work during the week. Nice and organized, nice and tidy, I can live it out on my schedule. But we have a gospel here this morning which makes it pretty clear that God's not interested in our schedules. We have a God who's not all that keen on conforming to our calendars and our time slots. It's a God who shows up whenever, wherever. And are we ready for that? What do we do with that? The gospel we have here is a parable, but it's really more of an allegory 
meaning that it's an extended metaphor. It's a story in which all of the component parts symbolize something else. We have this bridegroom who symbolizes what our first reading refers to as wisdom, wisdom in all her glory, what Eastern religions would call enlightenment, what we've come to know as the presence of the Holy Spirit, the very face of God, living and present around us, among us, and within us. Showing up, not when it's convenient for us, but whenever and anytime, anywhere. We, of course, are symbolized in the story as those ten young, naive, eager young women who are divided into two camps. Those who have planned ahead, who have planned to be ready no matter when this wisdom of God shows up. And those who had only allocated a certain allotment of time. And when the Spirit, the wisdom, the face of God doesn't show up in that narrow band of time they had scheduled, they miss it entirely. The lamp in the story, the lamps that they carry, are symbols of our hearts. The oil is the fuel of compassion. So we're left pondering this question this morning. When we leave here and are sent forth into the world, how much fuel of compassion are we going to carry with us? Will we carry enough to illuminate the face of God anytime, anywhere? Or will we only carry enough to illuminate the face of God when we've scheduled it, when it fits into our calendars? The invitation, of course, is to do the former. The invitation is to come here and fill our symbolic flasks, to fill ourselves on the Word and the Eucharist and prepare to become the body and blood of Christ in the world in a very real, present way. The invitation is to carry with us a fullness of compassion so that we are ready at any time, any place, to welcome and illuminate the very face of God.